What's up, Steeler Nation? We are back for another great show with another amazing guest. But before we get started, well, first off, Mike is in Mexico at a wedding. Congrats to my guy, Corey Herman, on time to not. I wish you many years of happiness. So it's just me. But we have, like I said, a great guest. But before we get started, we want to shout out some of our favorite partnerships over at Steel City Wheelhouse, where the bar is set. Tires for all cars and trucks can now be purchased online at SteelCityWheelhouse.com. And guess what? Financing is available. So make sure you get out and see our guys, John and John over there. All custom auto work, whatever you need from tent to tires to a, re a remote starter for the cold. They do it all. So make sure you go check them out at Steel City Wheelhouse where the bar is set. And then, yes, it is blue. It is brewed in La Trobe, Stoney's Beer. Why settle for a run-of-the-mill mass-produced beer when you can have the best? Upgrade your beer game, raise your standards, and taste the difference that Stoney's Beer can deliver. And it delivers. And as we've been saying since the season, it's been delivering more uh, in the red zone than the Steelers. And uh, so shout out to Stoney's, another great organization in beer. It's making a comeback. So get ready. It's already here, actually. But before we get to it, Mike Riddleman coming up next. Director and scouting of player personnel for the College Gridiron. Let's get to it, Shane. Turn up your volume, because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast, Steelers Crazy. Harris Smith shields, Flacco Polamalu takes it home, Super Bowl 43, Pittsburgh might be bound for that thanks to number 43. The sickest Pittsburgh Steelers podcast. Sports entertainment like no other, it's gonna be sick. Yeah, so as I said, we have an amazing guest today. I said he is the Director of Scouting and Player Personnel for the College Gridiron Showcase. It's a five-day event in Fort Worth, Texas. The top seniors from all across the country. Uh, so let's bring them on. Mike, how are you? Hey, thanks for having me on today. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. You know, we've been connected for a while on social media and been following along with everything that you guys are doing over there. So uh you know, I know our viewers, I know, I know we'll get into it too. Uh, you know, our viewers would love to hear about the Steeler alums that, uh, you know, came through the showcase. Yep. So uh, just kind of talk about first and foremost, like, how did you, you know, get involved in this? Were you, you were you a player in college? Like what, what, would, when your love for football, when did that start? Yeah. So great question there. So I grew up in Pittsburgh. I went to Hopewell High School, uh, okay. played football and baseball there, then went to Waynesburg University, played football there. Started three years at defensive end, got into coaching, um, came on as an intern with the College Gridiron Showcase. Jose Jefferson and Craig Red are the two co-founders of the event, and they've been great, um, two great friends and mentors with me with this. And, you know, I've kind of worked my way up in there, and, and now it's um, a, a group effort to bring in over 300-plus uh, prospects to Fort Worth, Texas, um, for a three to four day event, you know, so it's, 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 um, it's a fun challenge. I like to say, so, you know, it's, you know, we're looking from FBS, FCS, D2, D3, yeah. NAIA, uh, for the Canadian It's colleges. work, but it's something that you enjoy. So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, uh, this will be going, it, I just completed year seven, uh, with CGS and, you know, CGS just got done with year 10. So it, it's been, it, it's exciting and each year's gone up and, uh, you know, I'm excited for 2025 now after we just got done with 2024, but no, it was a good group of athletes and we had 155 scouts, uh, all 32 NFL teams, wow. all nine CFL teams, the UFL was represented, the IFL. So um, definitely well represented, you know, from the pro levels and, you know, it, it was a good group of, like I said, it was a good group of athletes. Yeah, I mean, that's amazing stuff. And I think like the process, like I know when I went to the combine, just seeing these guys, you know, their dreams come true. And then you see them at the draft, just like everything about the whole process. I think that that's what makes it, you know, and being able to be a part of the process and doing what you do. I just I find that absolutely amazing. So oh, with that being said, talk about the, you know, the alumni, uh, you know, we're a Steeler based podcast. So obviously talk about some yeah, of the absolutely. black people who, who came through because I know our viewers would love to hear that. 
Yeah, so uh, I think we have about five alumni on the Steelers roster. Um, start now. I'll start with Dylan Cook. Uh, he's an offensive okay, tackle. Yeah. He made he made the uh, fifty three main roster, uh, and his I believe is his second year in the league. Uh, he originally mm -hmm. came out uh, as an undrafted free agent with Tampa Bay, and um, yeah, oh sorry, the sun sun's really glaring here. So oh, you're uh, all right. Yeah. So um, let me do this. Um, Dylan actually came out. There we go. There you go. Much better. So Dylan came out of Montana and yeah. he was actually an NAIA, uh, quarterback. And okay. he, when he transferred to Montana, he was, uh, in transition to offensive line, uh, became an all conference type of player. I mean, measuring at six, six, three, ten. You know, moves very well. The position came down the CGS, you know, showed he couldn't play the offensive tackle position, also played a little bit inside. I think he played a little bit inside with Tampa Bay, you know, came to Pittsburgh, uh, really showed he can be that, you know, that dependable, you know, uh, backup type of offensive lineman, you know, as his, uh, his career continues and really shows the athleticism from being a former quarterback, you know, transition to the offensive tackle position. So uh, the next one is Christian Kuntz, uh, Chartiers Valley yeah. graduate, uh, Duquesne, uh, All-American at Duquesne, um, you know, as a linebacker, came his Great own guy. Draft. Yeah, awesome, awesome dude. Um, you know, has been a consistent force at the long the long snapper position for Pittsburgh. Um, you know, again. Under, under that. undervalue that position. Like, it seems like it's just, but that, there's a lot, lot more that goes into it than people know, you know, so I, I give it. <laughs> No, I mean, Christian's a great dude. Um, and then also, you know, just look at his resume, what he did at Duquesne, if you have a chance mm -hmm. uh, after listening to this. I mean, he, he was a phenomenal player. It, it is, It still is a phenomenal player. Uh, the next guy is Ryan McCollum. He is an uh, offensive lineman, uh, center guard, uh, plays has versatility playing center and the guard position coming out of Texas A&M. Another undrafted free agent type of guy. Actually got some reps. He was with Detroit yeah. before Pittsburgh. Uh, actually played in some games there, I believe his rookie year and his second year. Uh, came here, you know, providing depth on the interior of the offensive line position. Um, and then next is uh, Trenton Thompson. You know, Trenton Thompson, you know, uh, he, he's uh, been a – He came uh, on. He came yeah, from the Bengals, player. right? I believe so. I, I have, I'm not sure off the top yeah, of my head. Yeah, but, I um, think so. Yeah, he, he played really he, – he stepped up. I mean, they, they were down to – I mean, Steelers were pulling guys off practice squad left and right. I mean, when the line yeah. got – and then, you know, corner – they just needed the depth um, this year. So, it was great to see him out there. Absolutely. He made and I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, he had uh, one or two interceptions this year. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think – I, I think he had the one, if I'm if, if I recall. Yeah, so. I mean, and it adds a great special teams value as well. Yeah. And, you know, playing coming in, you know, being that backup safety, that third safety on the team, real and Trenton's a great guy too. Uh, all, all five of these guys are great guys. And then the last one is Rodney Williams uh, from uh, Tennessee Martin, the tight end, you know, uh, again, a practice yeah. squad guy that got elevated, made a couple big plays on special teams this year. I mean, a great dude, a developmental player. And, you know, you can see the Steelers are developing their, you know, practice squad, lower round type of guys. And that's what CGS really hones in on. Uh, our, mm. our, our our market is that fifth through seventh round undrafted free agent type of guy, you know, yeah. the you know, under the radar type of guy. And, you know, going the year 10, you know, finishing year 10 now, that's been our niche in the market here. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, excited to see these guys um, produce in the league. And, you know, the Steelers have, you know, Seeing the Steelers have five CGS alumni yeah. is awesome to hear and see. And I'm sure that it's definitely just going to, you know, continue to, uh, you know. You hope, so you hope every year, you hope all, every year. Yeah, man. that's all we can hope for. But again, yeah, man, that's absolutely. just great stuff. So it was good to hear, you know, everything that you're doing. So obviously we would just have to get your take on the current Steeler team. Let's start with, the quarterback situation. Um, I think Omar Khan, actually, I just seen on Twitter X, whatever they call it now that, you know, they, they're still trusting in Kenny Pickett. Um, I covered Kenny Pickett all throughout college. I want nothing more than Kenny Pickett to succeed, but when is the, what is the ceiling at this point? And what are you going to go into this 
penalties and you have to bring someone in there, whether it's Mason, just kind of where are you at is a, is a Yinzer. Are you a Steeler fan? I would take it that you are being from hope. Well, you know, I, I grew I grew up a Steelers fan. Being you know, a Yenzer it, it, yourself. Oh, so. uh, I grew up a, I grew up a Steelers fan, but you know, again, I'm a fan of football and the role I'm in. Um, you know, I, I think with Kenny, I, I think the sky's the limit with his potential. Uh, I, I really do. I, I think, you know, being that first round pick, being mm-hmm. a, having the career he did at Pitt, I think going the year three, I think there there can be something special there, um, you know, with the potential. And I, I know with, you know, the offense was underwhelming the past uh, past two years with, you know, uh, new, with OC. A new OC and everything like that. But I think, you know, there's still potential there. And then I, I think your quarterback room in, in Pittsburgh is great. You know, if they bring back Mason Rudolph, that's that's another key component there. Yeah, I'm and, for bringing back Mason. And competition breeds success, you know. So I, I, I'm excited to see what, what happens there. I think that the, the Steelers are, you know, are – are comfortable at quarterback and, you know, and they, they have the talent there and, you know, and, and again, again, with Arthur Smith coming in, I'm excited to see what the offense looks like. And, you know, it, it can only go from up from here. Yeah. So talk about, we talked about the offense. Let's talk about a little bit on the defensive side of the ball. Um, you know, you have Cam Hayward who's getting up there in age uh, coming back from an injury you know, Larry Ogunjobi, TJ Watt is going to de- do what TJ Watt does uh, when healthy. Minka Fitzpatrick battled injuries last year. Um, you know, this is, I think it was the highest paid on paper uh, defense uh, last year. Um, obviously, despite injuries, you know, linebackers going down and a lot of guys stepped up as we talked about the practice squad next man mentality. That I mean, that's, that's what it is in the right, NFL. Right. Um, opportunities, you know, you just always have to be ready. But uh, just kind of talk about the defensive side of the ball. Obviously, Tomlin's always going to put a good defense out. But where where do you do you see this team, this Steeler team next year, a playoff team or, or on the brink or a Super Bowl contender? Or is it like still too early? I, I think it's again, we're we're in the off season, you know, yeah. and, and any fan can say, oh, I, I hope the Super Bowl or everything like that. But there's still a lot of the off yeah. season to uncover, you know, free agency still hasn't happened. The draft is still about to happen. And you hit the nail on the head Mm -hmm. with Tomlin's always going to have a a good defense prepared uh, for this organization, you know, and and having TJ Watt out there, having a consistent presence with Cam Hayward in in the interior. Uh, Laird Ogunjobi was there with a a consistent presence presence at times. Um, I think, yeah, um, I think, Adding more depth along the defensive line is going to help, regardless of you know free agency mm-hmm. or the draft. Um, I, again, it's a good uh, draft I, for not to switch yeah. back offensive linemen. They need bad. Yeah, uh, with so, Mason Cole uh, being released. Yeah, I so almost forgot I, again, about that. I don't want to neglect it. Uh, no, I got you. No, I, I think there there's a lot of potential. You know, from a team that was a consistent. Down the down the run, you know, making making that consistent push um, um, in the playoffs and everything like that, you know. So, I, I think there's a the, the sky's the limit where they can be at their potential. But again, it's too early to tell. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, I, I would say they would if if the roster right now was what it was. Obviously, Kenny isn't going to be the only quarterback, but just hypothetically speaking, you have to look at it like I would say that they'd be right around what they are on the you know a, a one and done playoff team. Um, but I can't speak on because Arthur Smith, is he going to bring in this new energy? And and that's what everyone hoped. I like to be optimistic, but, uh, you know, I grew up, you know, watching Super Bowls and Jerome Bettis being sent off in Detroit. And, you know, right. Ben Roethlisberger was my quarterback all these years. And I think people <laughs> really see, I mean, I think it's like in the NFL, it's just a quarterback driven league. And, you know, defense went, well, you could have mediocre quarterback play, but you just, you, you really need someone who can really get in there. And, you know, Kenny did, I, I will say he does show spurts of that, but we just need to see it consistently. And I think that a lot of the people will shut up, including myself. I mean, it's obviously my job to be critical of all these guys and they're all great people. But at the end of the day, like it, the NFL doesn't care about your feelings. It's about winning games. And if we're talking right. strictly on the field, I mean, you got to show it, you know, so I, I really hope I, I do. I am optimistic and it's too early. I think if they do well in this draft and, and sign, you know, which Omar shows that, you know, he'll go out and get guys. I just don't know if it's 
you know, what it's, if it works. So that's all we can do. We can all speculate yeah. and do whatever we want. Uh, it's the last day in February. So it's like, you know, we're just, we're, we're looking for anything to talk about, but Hey man, right. it, it was, it was really great having you on and uh, just picking your brain and just Absolutely. tell everyone what you have coming up next. And, you know, the college gridiron, like I definitely, we're going to have to talk off air and uh, exchange Absolutely. some stuff because I, I definitely want to be a part of it and uh, be down there and cover. And I, you know, I think that's a great opportunity and I'm like an underdog myself. So like to have, you know, see these guys go there and really prove themselves and be like, I belong here. I think that that's, that's just, it's, it's all around great stuff. So keep, keep up the good work. I appreciate but yeah, it. Yeah. Tell no. everyone where, where they could, uh, you know, find you all our viewers and stuff like that. Yeah, and, no, you know, I'm, uh, a website, even athletes that may be listening, that may be interested in, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So we, we do have a website, uh, college, uh, the college Grid Iron showcase does, uh, mm-hmm. does have a website. They're on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, be more than happy to connect with anyone willing to talk football, learn more about the College Gridiron Showcase, what Craig Red and Jose Jefferson have built. It's something special. Um, again, it's adding another layer uh, to the all-star game landscape. You know, Jim Nagy does a great job at the Senior Bowl. Eric Galco does a great yeah. job at the uh, East West Shrine game. East West Shrine game. Uh, there's yeah, a whole bowl. Good one. Yeah, there's there's us at CGS. So again, a, a lot of ta- a talent on the landscape for the all-star game circuit. It was a great all-star game circuit this past January. Um, you know, I, I'm getting ready for pro days. You know, I'm excited to see how the participants of CGS uh, do at their pro days, see how the draft goes. And then we're, we're going to start building our board in the summer, you know, for 2025 mm-hmm. and uh, moving forward and looking forward uh, to having you guys down there, hopefully. And, and you know, yeah. any media. Well, and regardless, you're close. So we're going to have to get lunch soon. Abs- so that, ab- absolutely. It. So, um, but yeah, uh, please feel free to reach out to me on any social media platform. Uh, would love to t- chat about ball. And then uh, thanks again for having me on today. Yeah, man. Anytime. Thanks. Thanks for letting us snack your brain and keep up the good work. Appreciate Take care, it, man. Yeah. Great stuff. Obviously we miss Mike, but we know that he's uh, celebrating a great wedding with one of our great friends in Mexico. Uh, Mike Riddleman, just director of us. Uh, scouting and player personnel for the college iron showcase. Uh, It's just a great five day event. And uh, any athletes that are listening, take advantage of this Um, aunt, uncle, uh, make sure you get there. And, you know, there's there's scouts from every single football league. So make sure you do that. You heard about, you know, the Steeler alum. And I think that that's that's just so cool to hear, you know, success stories. And, you know, I'm all part of the process and the journey and just, you know, having that mentality of never giving up blue collar Pittsburgh work ethic. So uh, this was just a great episode. Um, before we get out of here, uh, just kind of wanted to, this, I feel like there's something in the air and I think that the Steelers are, there is going to be a signing here soon. Uh, you know, everyone's kind of leaning towards the Justin, Justin Fields. Um, after listening to Omar Khan's press conference uh, at the combine, I will say that it just seems like they're going to bring Mason back and it's going to be Mason Rudolph versus Kenny Pickett. Uh, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just the guy. Uh, who's here, you know, giving you Steeler content, uh, just just uh, reporting the news here. But uh, it's not shocking to me. Um, that's just how the Steelers operate. And, you know, it could go one or two ways. I just think that it, it, it could work. And, you know, Arthur Smith coming in can really change, you know, and bring new energy into this offense. Or w- was Kenny Pickett, you know, not the first round guy that they thought? Uh, I sure hope that, that he is. Um, because this team has so much talent, and uh, I think they're just a few pieces away from making a legitimate run. So with that being said, we appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with us, as always, on the SICK Podcast, Steeler Crazy. Mike will be back next week. Also, I wanted to shout out my guy, Sammy. It is uh, SMA Awareness Day. Uh, Go check it out. Um, They're doing great stuff in Canada with their group. Um, so shout out to my guy, Sammy, man, you look up to you every day. You're, you're the best. Um, we'll be back for another great episode next week. Uh, more draft talk, shout out to steel city wheelhouse in Stoney's beard DraftKings. This has been another great episode of the sick podcast, Steeler crazy Shane, take it from here. 
And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast Steelers Crazy on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.